Well, guys, it's out the Pacific. So let's let's hope that the uh, the devs saved this game with this campaign because it's uh, the last roll of the dice for them. So let's get into it. Let's see what they got. I mean, look at it. No locked levels. Again, Dark Flow have learned from Stalingrad, which is amazing to see. So I want to start off on a positive note here. Kind of discussing the changes that Dark Flow have made to make Enlisted a much better game than it was a year ago. Those three levels look amazing. It's all like you need, dude. They put so much work into this campaign. It's honestly so fun. It, it makes me feel like the devs are listening to what we're saying. They're listening to what we're saying. They're listening to what we're saying. As the high caliber update is about to be revealed, I've done a lot of different takes. I've been angry. I've been upset. Uh, I've tried to joke about it. To talk about something that has been really a problem for Unlisted, this problem can easily kill the game. I'm kind of just done. Honestly, that's that's where I've arrived. I want to talk about a game that currently seems to be edging its way into a death spiral. A game that I'm personally quite fond of. Enlisted. As a project manager myself, I think that understanding the pattern of blunders and failures that seem to perpetually define this game's development can provide valuable insight to project managers and game developers everywhere. A good starting point for this story is right before Darkflow released the Pacific update. They were on thin ice with the community from their total mishandling of a previous update, but when Darkflow released the Pacific campaign, it was nice, but it didn't really fix any of the game's numerous flaws. Nevertheless, the Pacific update was of reasonable quality, and unlike their previous campaign, it didn't put all the best guns behind a premium paywall. The update resonated with the community, at least a little. Frankly, I think we were just astonished and relieved that the Pacific update wasn't quite as much of a diaper-filling disaster as the Stalingrad release that put us all in a bad mood, but I digress. What's wrong with it? My first thought would be... a lot. Before anyone suggests that the game is still in beta, I don't care. The game came out of closed beta testing years ago. It's been available to the public for years, so they can call it whatever they want. Alpha phase, beta phase, cheeseburger with onions phase, I don't care. As long as Gaijin and Darkflow market and monetize and list it like it's a full game, I'm going to talk about it like one. So what's wrong with the game? Well, to start, it's a hopelessly buggy and poorly designed disaster. I strain to think of a single feature, element, or experience of this game that isn't at least partially compromised by glitches, bugs, or some other careless design oversight. The bots, which are basically the core selling point of the game, are not even remotely close to working. They'll get stuck or confused anytime they're in a location that doesn't meet the American Disability Act standards for wheelchair accessibility, and when we're talking about that, I might as well mention that you get stuck and glitched into stuff all the time. Right now, spots that have a gap between the terrain and an object are about as hazardous as landmines, so steer clear and make sure there isn't any cover on top of your spawn point as you put it down. Half the time, tanks will just glitch and vibrate, making accurate shooting at enemies pretty much impossible unless you're on perfectly flat terrain, and aiming around corners or in tight spaces is glitched beyond measure, so try to stay clear of those too. But those bugs pale to the bigger structural flaws that have been baked into the design of the game since day one. Starting off, of course, with the fact that the game is downright, full stop, unashamedly, unrelentingly, unbelievably, unfathomably greedy. If you played a different Gaijin game, and by that I mean War Thunder, you know exactly what to expect. Basically, every single menu, feature, or element of the game is monetized in some fashion. I understand that this is a free-to-play game, but the developer expects the price of entire AAA video games for even the most inane minor content. The grind to unlock new gear and Enlisted is enormous. We're talking about hundreds of hours to complete a single tech tree, of which there are currently 12 in the game. One for each side for each campaign. And to make things worse, the grind is linear, so you have absolutely no choice in how you progress. You want to drive a tank with more armor than a canoe in Moscow? Sorry, you gotta grind through 20 levels of crap you don't want first. But, of course, if you enter your credit card information right here, we can double your XP gain, so there's always that. And sometimes even that's not enough. Take, for example, these levels in the Stalingrad campaign. On top of grinding out the level, you also need to buy an access pass. If you grind it out the level without paying the money, then eat dirt. You'll have to grind for the next free thing. Look here, anything that has this purple tag on it means you have to grind to get it and then pay money on top of that. And they'll also re release content at an inflated price and then quote unquote unquote discount it. Oops, that's not legal in the EU or Canada, but honestly these laws aren't very well enforced, so who cares? You want to skip that grind? You think the Sherman in Berlin looks cool? Well that'll be 3,370 points. Oops, sorry we don't sell tokens in those quantities, better buy nearly double the amount you need. 
This leads to a system that's also borderline pay to win. Did you unlock the Tiger 1 in Normandy? Congratulations, because unless you have the gaming skills of an amputated sloth, you just won every single tank duel you'll ever get into. Theoretically, you get to get this stuff for free, but that's going to be a several hundred hours that you have to repeat for each campaign and each side you play on. A feat only presumably possible if you for free if you have no job, saintly patience, and a lack of understanding that other better games exist. Realistically, this stuff is just there for microtransaction paying veterans to slap around the free-to-play losers with since there's no matchmaking at all. And speaking of no matchmaking, if for each top tier in this game, you basically just get to slap everyone around. I can guarantee, pretty much, that you'll be the top of the scoreboard every single game with a 70% or higher win rate. If you don't pay money, then you're just going to be fed to the meat grinder of much better equipped players. And if you're new to the game, or in fact a veteran trying to switch from one campaign to another where you have to restart the grind from square zero, then you might just start to grasp why the player retention in Enlisted is so incredibly low. Oh, and cosmetics. You want to make your soldiers look different? Well, cosmetics are also for sale. You can change the look of your soldiers for about $6. Each. You don't unlock cosmetics, you buy individual separate copies of them. There are usually five to six people in a squad, and depending on how many campaigns you play, you may have dozens of squads under your belt. So either fork over hundreds of dollars or get used to the default look there, Charlie Bucket. Come back when you have more money. You know, the April Fool's joke of single-use NFT cosmetics was a lot more funny before they're actually added to the game. Gaijin is treating this game like it's another War Thunder. And if you've played that, then you know what exactly what I'm talking about. But they can get away with that because War Thunder is a vehicle-only multiplayer tank game. If you're unhappy with how Gaijin monetizes that gurgling gulf of greed, but you still want to play a multiplayer tank game, then your options are about as limited as someone who mentions anime in their Tinder profile. But we don't live in that alternate universe where there's only one first-person shooter. We live in the real world where first-person shooters are possibly one of the most oversaturated markets followed only by mobile games and NFTs. I understand that Enlisted is a free-to-play, and as the owners of the property, the developers are free to monetize it however they like. I'm not entitled to free content, but when analyzing why players, especially new players, are flocking from this game in droves, it would be a failure to omit just the absurd degree to which this game is monetized. And the next thing, I want to talk about the lobby being stacked with fake players. Take this game for example, my team's managed to hold off the Americans on the first point and overwhelming victory. Is this just because our team is so much better, more skilled, more coordinated, and just plain dashingly handsome? No, it's because their team has barely any players. Darkflow populates matches in this game with fake players to pretend the lobbies aren't empty. Look here. Gaming is not a real player, despite him having a fake name, a fake rank, a spot on the scoreboard, and even a cute little fake rank where we can pretend he's played a few games and managed to reach the rank of sergeant. But he'll never say anything in the chat, he won't respond to directions, I can't even add him to my friends list because the bots don't have player profiles. Because the bots in this game are either stuck somewhere or standing out in the open getting shredded by machine guns and wasting spawn tickets, then pretty much every single match of Enlisted is decided in the first 30 seconds by whichever team has more real players. Darkflow refuses to acknowledge that they use fake players to pretend lobbies aren't ghost towns. In fact, as far as I know, there's only one single mention of the fact that the game does use fake bots, and it was on a developer update status sheet, which was a really nice gesture to have until they deleted it less than a day after it went up. And because pretty much every single match is decided by whoever has less bots on their team, the game is about as competitive as an art school admissions office. I could keep listing things wrong with the game until the heat death of the universe and still have time to spare, but Darkflow invariably refuses to listen to feedback anyway, so frankly there's no point. This video isn't about Darkflow and it's not about Enlisted, it's about project management, game development, and a case study of the blunders you should avoid if you're trying not to kill your game. Speaking of, it's time to talk about the High Caliber update. That's how you get away with murder. Now having your game in a bad state isn't enough to kill it. Especially these days since the consumer market on the whole seems to have become frustratingly tolerant of games that are incomplete or saturated with monetization. So why does Enlisted seem to struggle? Why are people demanding a boycott following the latest big update at the time of writing? Well, as someone who's played this game for years and a professional project manager with years of experience, I believe it comes down to the way the developers are managing and communicating with the community. In December of 2022, the game released High Caliber. In this update, we got one map on a campaign nobody plays anyway, a bunch of copy-pasted content that's either already in the game or some imported tank and plane models from War Thunder. On top of that regular content, there's also 12 new premium squads which are sold at a whopping 50 US dollars each, so over $500 worth of garbage. Frankly, this update should have been called the Captain Ahab update for how obviously it's hellbent focused on hunting whales, but I don't expect that would fly with their marketing department. We also got the eponymous feature of the High Caliber update where you can place heavy machine gun turrets down, even though regular machine gun nests were already a feature of the game. And that's all. That's the new, that's the newness right there. The thing doesn't even work anyways. Half the time the bullets don't even go where you aim the gun, and you need a microscope to hit anything further than 20 feet away anyways. But the HMGs being buggy and broken is sort of besides the point. 
I talked about the problems in the game because I want to impress upon you just how cosmically far down the priority list heavy machine gun should have been. Given the state that the game is in, heavy machine gun should have been a footnote on page 700 of the product of element plan, not the central focus of an update representing three months of your team's work. And when the developers spend all that time and come back with copy-pasted filler, pointless additions, more than $500 of premium content, then that's when you send the message that charging people an exorbitant price for filler garbage is more important than actually fixing the game, which is currently crumbling like a wafer biscuit under a hydraulic press. Here we learn a lesson about prioritization and planning. I don't know who the project manager over at Darkflow is, but it's clear to me that they're operating from one update to the next with no long-term plan in place. Each update seems to meander around aimlessly adding content that's vestigial and meaningless without actually making any long-term progress towards fixing the problems that are killing the game. You can look up any video from a year or more ago about biggest problems with Enlisted, and I can pretty much guarantee that all of the complaints made in that video will be just as true today. Which leads me to the final ingredient for your game-killing poison, which is to make sure that you refuse to communicate with the community. For those of you who have never played or even heard of Enlisted, I want you to read this. Are you finished? Good. Now you know exactly as much about Darkflow's development plans and roadmap as me, someone who's played, paid, and persisted with the game for several years. We hear things on the news page maybe a week or two before they get added to the game. Although in my experience, I think that the reason the developers have refused to post any kind of long-term roadmap is because, like I say earlier, I doubt developers even have an internal roadmap. The high caliber update probably wouldn't have chuffed our beans so hard if we had even the vaguest notion that this was just a minor content drop and the developers have big plans for the future. But as always, we have absolutely no clue what they're working on, and frankly, I don't think they do either. So I've been making this video for weeks and literally the day I was going to post it, the developers revealed that they will be creating a roadmap. So let it not be said that they can't learn from their mistakes. Who knows what that roadmap includes? You can follow the news on the dev page if you're interested in the game. But nevertheless, I left the segment in because there's still an incredibly important lesson for developers and project managers here, which is do not leave your customers in the dark, especially when you have nothing or very little to show for your work. Thank you. Finally, this game is also very bad at receiving criticism. I know it's a Gaijin game and those who have played other games by this publisher know pretty much what to expect, but seriously, on the forums or especially on the official Discord, your content will just straight up get deleted and you'll be muted if you're too negative about the game. Remember how I showed you in Stalingrad that you don't even get the gear you grinded for unless you paid money? Even spelling Stalingrad with a dollar sign instead of an S is usually enough to get your content removed. And since I don't perpetually enable the behavior that's killing the game, and because I call out the mods for purging criticism, I get banned all the time. Once I got banned for sowing dissent, whatever that means. When I asked, the mod says it was because I was turning people against the staff. You thunder against me! You have done that yourself! You will not take her from me! Your anger and your lust for power have already done that. Nowadays, if you even mention the phrase sowing dissent, even if you're just asking what it means, you'll just get instantly deleted and banned because the moderators of Gaijin games react with a hair trigger sensitivity and insecurity of a YouTube comments section. Seriously, project managers have wet dreams about the customers who are as dedicated to the project as video game communities, and Enlisted has one of the best communities around. I know that gaming communities can be fickle and difficult to work with, but honestly, I can't think of another publisher in the non-indie space that shuns its community quite as hard as this one. It's such a wasted resource, and listening community feedback is going to be critical to fixing the game. So let's get to the final act here. I truly, really love this game, and I hope that the developers can turn it around. When all the bits line up just right, the game is a blast. It's fun and engaging, with just the right blend of competitiveness and casualness that makes it easily accessible, but not boring. There are tiny hints that the developers are finally starting to listen to the problems, and I don't put all the blame for the game state with Darkflow. It's very likely that the publisher and parent company Gaijin is at least partially to blame for how outrageously monetized this game is. So, going forwards in 2023, Darkflow may or may not bring the game around, but regardless of whether they do, I hope that at least some other aspiring game developers or project managers who are watching can learn some lessons. Plan diligently, prioritize your tasks, create both long and short term plans so that you can coordinate and adjust, communicate clearly with your customers and take their feedback seriously, and be mindful of the competitors to your product. That's how you avoid killing your game. Thanks for watching.